It's Tuesday. I've got an update on the eviction moratorium, what comes next for my property portfolio, and some shaking up with the brokerage business model. Let's get right to it. So yesterday, if you took the time like I did, and I hope you didn't because it created, it created a headache for me, and listened to the assemblymen and women on the floor debating the extension of the moratorium, you would have heard the reasons as to why. And really what it boils down to, it's because in Albany, they just haven't yet gotten around to crafting a plan to distribute those funds, the 2.3 billion, with a B, 2.3 billion dollars that the federal government has allocated to New York State specifically for the purpose of rent relief for eligible tenants who are behind. So obviously that's extremely frustrating. As I've said it a million times in my, you know, over the, over the course of this last year and a half, whether you've caught me in person or on video, first of all, housing providers don't really want to evict people unless they're not paying their rent for a good reason, right? So if I've got people as I do, that have been impacted financially by COVID, I don't want to evict them. Most people I know don't. In fact, in the t almost 10 years I've been selling real estate, no one's ever said to me, I want to buy some houses, throw all the tenants out and leave them vacant. It's literally the 180 degrees from what we want to accomplish as housing providers and investors. We need good tenants, just like good tenants need good housing providers. So this moratorium extension does nothing but cover the butts of the people in Albany that have failed to lead on this issue and failed to have some sort of uh, a plan prepared so that when this last extension ex expired a few days ago, we would have been ready to get people back into the courts. Those courts could vet out those who are eligible for, for rent relief. They could connect them with that relief. The relief can be distributed and the housing providers can be made whole again. So um, I'm not surprised necessarily that it, that it passed, and I would, and I, I doubt that uh, Governor Cuomo is not going to sign it. If he vetoed it, I would be shocked. So this thing is all all but said and done. Um, so again, this is not about protecting tenants. This is not good for housing providers, as many of the the members tried to claim in their in their remarks. This is bad for everybody all around. The only people it's really good for are the the, the thankfully relatively small segment of tenants that are choosing not to pay rent and that are not eligible for said relief that someday may manifest itself if Albany can pull it together, which I guess that's yet to be seen. So, you know, as many uh, folks have reached out, you know, Rich, what are you going to do next? What are you doing? Um, and unfortunately, what I'm going to do is continue the plan that I started last summer when the whole moratorium kicked in and I realized that there was an enormous reluctance to talk about the fact that the Tenant Protection Act created the foundation for much of the abuse that we're seeing today. And I'm going to continue to list my properties and sell them. That's point blank where I'm going with this. At the beginning of last year, Mike and I owned about 37 properties with about 90 units across them, and we are in the process of liquidating them. We sold 15 single families. We've sold all of our five units, but one, though it's under contract. I've sold off a handful of doubles. I've sold one of the rooming houses. And really by the end of this year, we will likely, although it's not guaranteed, keep about six or seven properties with about 23 units in them. The rest of them are getting sold. And the biggest disappointment that I have in all this, as someone who was passionate about having local housing providers providing housing, especially to those most in need, is that a majority of the houses that we're selling, all but I think one at this point, have gone to an out of town or out of state investor. So you've got a concentration of poverty that exists within Monroe County and specifically within the city of Rochester. You have a lack of wealth generation, which is part of the problem and why we have a concentration of poverty. You have local housing providers that are trying to invest, generate a little bit of profit so that that profit can get rolled back into further neighborhood revitalization. And now that we're getting destroyed, those, pro those properties are gonna transfer ownership to people outside the region. Those properties are gonna follow those people with them. And we're gonna be extracting wealth out of the concentration of poverty that exists within the core of our community and our county. And it's gonna go someplace else. And who knows if it's ever gonna come back. Those properties could be tied up in a larger portfolio because almost all of the folks that are buying from me have larger portfolios because those are the folks that could absorb these losses. And as I've pointed out before, the city of Rochester's own study last summer indicated that the frequent filer of, of evictions are the people that own the least number of properties. The types of properties that experience the highest rates of eviction are singles and doubles. 
which are again, the most affordable rental properties that one can acquire. So people like myself, a small landlord, but certainly people smaller than me in terms of property portfolio size, um, these are the folks that are getting de uh, devastated right now. And many of those people are people that are from the concentration of poverty that were starting that process of wealth building for themselves and their families via the most affordable rental property. Because if you have a lack of access to capital, you have to purchase the most affordable product on the shelf. And the singles and the doubles are just that. So I, along with many others out there, are gonna continue the process of liquidating properties. I've tapped into the best properties that I own first, which offer me pulling out the most equity so I can turn around and shore up other properties that have been devastated and left vacant over the last year so that they're properly ready to go, turnkey investments for the next buyer, and hopefully they'll have a better time uh, and, and, and select better tenants that aren't going to leave them hanging like I unfortunately did. So it's, it's just, it's disappointing all around. I think it's disappointing mostly for the community and, and what it's gonna mean to this concentration of poverty that exists within Monroe County. And there are certainly other concentrations of poverty throughout the state. And those are the places that are going to be impacted the most. So for all the rhetoric that the Democrats spew out of Albany about caring about people in these concentrations of poverty, they are literally making decisions that are going to make their lives worse. And this isn't just to the people that can't afford rent. It's all the other people around, the other good tenants whose landlords and housing providers can't afford proactive repairs can't afford maintenance, can't take stay on top of things that they wanna stay on top of for those good tenants because the money and the capital simply not there. It's also bad for folks that are living next door to problem folks, and there are problem folks in the city, drug dealers and prostitution and all the other things that take place that people don't wanna live near. And they call the, the their, their housing provider if it's in the same, you know, a, a unit within the same building, or maybe it's a, a neighboring property, and the housing providers are literally without any recourse to get folks moved along to make life better for the good, mostly good, because most people are very good um, tenants that, that are complaining about what's going on. So, um, so that leads me to my next point. Um, you know, that's, that's what I'm doing with my, the, the portfolio side of what Mike and I do. Now, there's obviously the real estate sales side of what I do, which is, you know, a separate, but, you know, somewhat connected industry. Uh, I obviously am a real estate agent, I'm a realtor. I sell real estate, I help people both sell, buy and sell properties. And that's where I got into this all to begin with. The investing came a few years after beginning that journey. Um, so because when I went independent and we started Rochester Property Solutions, we did so because we wanted to be able to continue our sales activities and start offering property management services to folks. Mostly because at that time, we almost had 100 units of our own that we were managing. And it just made sense to take that model and, and bring it out to a larger you know, number of folks, helps offset some of the labor costs and, and would offer us the ability to you know, work with our investors a little more in depth than simply just helping them buy and sell property. So um, what we are going to do is we are going to be making a major shift in the business model of the brokerage as well. The property management for the, for the number of clients that I had that were um, under our management, I have since um, basically, you know, kind of sent them over to some other folks within the community that are that have a bigger uh, presence than we did to begin with. And people that I feel are going to be, uh, I'm very confident I should say that they're going to be folks that can handle the property management aspect for those clients. But we are going to uh, basically hone in specifically on sales, helping people buy and sell property in the greater Rochester in, in Western New York region. And we are bringing in what I think is going to be um, a fantastic foundation for agent success. I've had some gripes over the years about different brokerage models that I've been a part of, things that I didn't like, things that I did, and um, in, in, in some exploring that we've been doing um, outside of the region through some other folks that we know in the real estate community, we have put together what I think is gonna be a fantastic plan for agent success. And I am looking forward to explaining it more to you as time goes on. I'm gonna leave you with that teaser. I'm not gonna give you too much information today, but I can assure you there is going to be more news coming. If you are an agent that is maybe not thrilled with where you are or you're looking for something different or if you're just looking to get into the business be to begin with let's talk because i think what we're putting together is going to be very um very intriguing to you so that's the latest and the greatest um we need leadership change we need leadership actually in albany um 
We're gonna to continue to sell off some of these properties that we have in order, uh, you know, basically in response to what's going on. And um, some more breaking news will be coming your way about what Rochester Property Solutions is going to look like going forward. I thank you, get in touch. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.